name's Gordon Deadman and welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Survival. Today we're going to be having a talk about how to go to the toilet in the bush in a way that is hygienic, respectful to the environment and leaves no trace, and is respectful to your fellow bushwalkers and campers that come after you. One of my pet hates is going into a wilderness area such as a state forest, national park or popular walking trail and all along the trail or behind obvious areas finding the area littered with toilet paper and sometimes far worse. I'm sure we can all identify with that. It is completely disrespectful to the environment and completely unnecessary. I'm going to show you a few ways without actually demonstrating of some th ideas we can use that leave no trace that you were ever there and com with complete respect for the people that are coming after you and using the bush. Most people go out into the bush and wilderness areas to enjoy nature and to escape the hustle and bustle of towns and cities and there's nothing worse than going into those areas and finding rubbish and toilet paper from people that are too lazy and inconsiderate to take their rubbish with them. When you find yourself out in the bush and you need to go to the toilet and you really can't wait, there are a few things you can do to minimise your impact on the environment and for those coming behind you. At the very, very least, what you need to do is walk off the trail, find an area that is out of the way from anyone else that no one is likely to stumble across, get yourself a stick, dig a hole, do your business and then cover it up with vegetation and then you can walk back to the trail and, and continue on knowing that no one is going to stumble across what you left behind. That is what you should do at the very, very least. Now in the absence of toilet paper, there are a few things you can use if you need to go to the toilet. One of the best and probably the most obvious is paper bark. Paper bark is brilliant. Not only is it used for fire lighting, shelter building and a multitude of other purposes, it makes brilliant toilet paper. If you don't have to, um, any paper bark, another good substitute is moss. Now, moss or sphagnum moss, which is found in the Northern Hemisphere, has been used for centuries as a wound dressing and it's all, also been used by parents and midwives to clean young babies when they're born and to wipe their bums. It is excellent for that, it's very soft and absorbent. Failing that, you can get yourself some grass. Bundle it up, buff it up so it's nice and soft. Make sure there is no sticks in it. You don't want a, a prick at all in the wrong place. That also makes great a substitute toilet paper. They're just a couple of examples that you can use when I'm out uh, tour guiding in Kakadu National Park in the Northern Territory, um, I have a toilet kit that I use for my uh, participants or on my uh, tour group. And when people need on the trail need to go to the toilet, I, uh, I issue this out to them. It's a bag which is made by Cedar Summit. And inside this, we have some toilet paper which is on a reel. It's all a waterproof bag. We have some hand sanitizer and I've got a couple of boxes of matches in here as well. And how this works, put those down there, when you must use toilet paper, now toilet paper takes at least two to three years, sometimes longer, to break down. It really stays around for a long time. And if you bury toilet paper, it's just dug up by animals again. And then it just litters the countryside. It's disgusting. So with respect to the environment, if you're using toilet paper and you're going to use it, and there are no other natural substitutes available, you need to A, take it with you after you've finished, obviously in some sort of bag, hygienic, and dispose of it later, or you need to burn it. Now, if you're going to burn it, obviously, you need to make sure it's safe to do so. It's not a high fire risk. There's not a great uh, a lot of wind. 
and you need to be responsible. But that's probably the best way of getting rid of it. And if you do it the right way, it is safe. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways of doing it. So first off, if you must use toilet paper, what we do, just like the, we mentioned before on the trail, you go off the trail into an area that no one's likely to go or around the camp a long way, at least 50 metres away from the camp in an area that's not near a water source. You don't want to do any of your business near a water source. Somewhere where no one's likely to go, get yourself a stick. You might want to get yourself a nice comfortable log as well. Get a stick, clear the ground. Make a nice cleared area, dig a little depression, clear that all around there, have a seat, do your business. After you've done your business, you get your toilet paper. Wipe your bum, and that goes whether it's for uh, number one or number two ladies. Put your toilet paper, after you've done that, put your toilet paper separately from where you've done your business. Get your stick, and cover your business up. A nice smattering of vegetation over the top. Obviously, you're not going to be kneeling in this position next to your business. You're going to be walking around there and somewhere else. Then what you do is, with some ma a match, your toilet paper's there. Observing which way the wind's blowing, if there is wind, to make sure that you're clear on the downwind side of that. You get your match. and you light your toilet paper. And you stand there and monitor it. Get yourself a stick, and as that burns, you rotate it so that every bit of that burns. Of course, you clear the area, being very cautious of the wind. You've got rid of any debris that might catch. and you rotate until every part of that bit of toilet paper is burnt. Obviously, that's why we don't put it back over here because we want it to remain as dry as possible. There's enough heat in there to get rid of any uh, moist parts. Once that has burned thoroughly through, then you could put your foot on that Have a double check to make sure we've got all the area. And then, like your business, you can then cover that up with some vegetation. And then cover the whole area with vegetation. I'll put our toilet roll back in our bag. Then you grab your sanitizer, which is in your toilet kit. Put that on your hands. And then what you have is a primary hygienic clean. So give your hands a good wash. Pop that back in there. Seal it up. And then when you get back to camp, you can give your hands a good secondary wash under some water. Now done that way, if you've covered that up cleanly, there is uh, no sign that you were ever there and that should be the aim. And if you've chosen an area that was off the beaten track, no one's likely to stumble across there anyway. That won't take that long to break down. You only need a small covering of dirt for that to break down. And that'll break down in a couple of weeks, two to three, if you put some dirt over the top. There's no toilet paper that is going to remain unsightly for years to come. 
and you've paid your part in respecting the environment and respecting your fellow campers. And that should be the absolute minimum. Now, a lot of people might think that's a real lot of effort to go, go to, to um, go to the toilet. But that is actually the, the correct way of doing so. And if you're not prepared to go to that effort and sort of respect the environment and your uh, fellow campers like that, then maybe you shouldn't be going out into the wilderness and bush areas at all, because that is what's required. It's the right thing to do. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode on how to go to the toilet in the bush in a hygienic and in an environmentally responsible way. My name's Gordon Dedman, and I look forward to seeing you again on another episode of Bushcraft Survival.